After about a month of relentless protests, senior figures within the Iranian government are now calling on the lawmakers to rethink on the compulsory hijab policy. Now, former Speaker of the Iranian Parliament, Ali Larijani, has now raised some serious concerns. He's essentially said three key things. One, that the country's hijab law, the compulsory hijab law, needs to be revisited. Secondly, he's also said that there's been a pretty strident response to the protests by the government. And third, the unrest within Iran or the issue of hijab is not an externally manufactured protest, but rather it is, it is something that has organically grown within Iran after the death of Mehsa Amini and is not a result of some machinations by the United States and Israel. Now, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei has repeatedly shown that he can in fact withstand international pressure as he's done with the case of sanctions. But what he cannot ignore is internal opposition. And the very first cracks within the government have already started to appear amongst Iran's political elite. Now, Larajani has been a central figure in the country's politics for decades. His tone is in stark contrast with what the administration has been holding. And it ends a long period of silence that has questioned the morality police. However, it seems like all of this is of course falling on deaf ears. You know, ناچار شدن عکس العمل نشون بدن یعنی کارشون کار انفعالی است ابتکار نیست برای اینکه بتوانن خلاهایی رو که برای اونها به وجود آمده پر کنن این کارها رو شروع کردن برنامه‌ریزی کردن پول خرج کردن افراد زیاد رو به میدان آوردن از شخصیت های سیاسی دنیا از آمریکا اروپا جای دیگه and also for more on this, we're being joined by Mr. Amiri Mohaddam, who's the director of the Iran Human Rights NGO, and he's joining us all the way from Norway. Now, Mr. Mohaddam, this, this, of course, is a crucial development. What Ali Larijani has said, that Iran must rethink its compulsory hijab policy. Do you think, finally, there, is, there are some voices within the administration in Iran which look like they want to relent to the demands of the protesters? Uh, uh, thanks for having me here. So you see, uh, I think the only thing that we can uh, take from this reaction is that uh, those who have been part of this uh, system for about 40 years, like Larry Jani, they clearly see that these protests uh, have the potential to change the whole system. So I would rather say that uh, this is an attempt to give some um, hope uh, to the protesters to calm them a little bit, if possible, to save the system. Uh, in, in the last uh, uh, 40 years, you know, we have had many uh, key figures that uh, uh, have uh, gradually been put away by the Supreme Leader, including Larijani. Larijani ran for presidency last time, but he was uh, found disqualified before being part of the elections. So, so I think this, this just shows the concerns of people who have been part of the regime that these protests are different from pro previous protests. They are lasting much longer. People are more determined. And uh, of course, it's not only about compulsory hijab. It's about uh, an incompetent, corrupt, and oppressive uh, regime that has taken away all Right. the human rights from the Iranian people. You know, the question that I also want to ask you is the fact that, you know, Fazi Hashmi, the daughter of Rafsan Jani, who is also seen as a very crucial figure within the Iranian revolution, and now Ali Lari Jani speaking out against compulsory hijab. How widespread is this thought within the Iranian administration that there may be a bit of a problem with the issue of making hijab compulsory on every woman in Iran? Yes. So, so, so you know, the, uh, previously there have been several factions within the system. So, uh, although uh, you know they have more in common than, uh, and the differences are not very big. But some of the factions believe that uh, you know we need to give some uh, liberties in order to manage to keep on the power, and then the other faction, which is ruling now, uh, says that. Uh, we need to uh, respond, uh, uh, you know, we, we need to give a very harsh response. Uh, so um, 
during all these years, Iranian uh, establishment, the Islamic Republic, it has lost many key figures. You know, uh, Faizer Rafsanjani's father, uh, Akbar Rafsanjani, who was uh, uh, number two after Ayatollah Khomeini after the revolution, mm -hmm. he was put away some, some years ago. So these cracks have been there all the time and the regime is uh, becoming, uh, you know, the core of the regime is becoming smaller and smaller because uh, uh, many of these figures have left the system. But, right. but you know, they don't represent um, a, a key factor. Right now, the key factor uh, are on the streets, uh, and that's uh, the people. Absolutely, and it is essentially the very young people, the students within universities who've come out in such big protests. It's almost unprecedented. Now, some have, in fact, gone on to describe what is happening in Iran at this moment as a counter-revolution to the Iranian revolution of 1979. Is that the sense that you all seem to be getting? Yeah, I, I think what we see is basically a huge movement of, uh, you know, people, uh, you say young people, but, you know, uh, we also see, you know, workers, we see there have been strikes in the oil sector. So, so what we see is start of a big revolution, I would say, uh, against the uh, 43 years uh, establishment. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Mohaddam, for joining us from Norway and getting us all those insights there. Vyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.